no mic. You know what that means, right? She doesn't Easter. Mean. Easter's coming, you're right. You got it. Like right now, yeah. <clears throat> we'll put the service on pause and retype it. Yeah. We lost them all. We need um, her husband. I'm sorry, this is the prayer, right? Yes, yes. As we listen to the prayer, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
into our midst. Come into our hearts. Come into our homes and our community, into our schools and workplaces. May we, may we welcome you everywhere, making room for you, preparing for you, anticipating your arrival with joy and reverence. We are ready in this season of Advent. Shine your light in those nooks and crannies we keep in the shadows. Sweep the cobwebs from our long hidden doubt and fears. Repair our torn <coughs> and wounded places. We long for your arrival. Come, Lord Jesus, come.
night's several hours. We cling to the promise of the light that is coming into the world. Help us to trust your promises. Let every heart here prepare a room for you. Here we are. Let it be with us according to your word. Please be in our midst this day. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. You are welcome here. In Jesus' name we pray. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. These familiar words were spoken by Mary upon the greeting of the city. Imagine the joy of this meeting when they discuss their own and each other's pregnancies together for the first time. And what did they talk about first? A boy, a girl, new clothes, new furniture. No, Mary says. My soul magnifies the Lord. I declare the greatness of God and my spirit rejoices. Mary, a young woman, not so long before, pregnant and unmarried, declares the greatness of God and recognizes the unique calling she has received. As with so many other mothers before and after her, she does not know what joys or sorrows may follow the birth, but she is ready to rejoice in God, her Savior. It is for Mary that we light this fourth candle. Mary, Mary, blessed among women, Mary, Mary, the Lord's holy servant, Mary, believe that God will have to fulfill the promises made to Abraham so long ago. Come, Lord Jesus, Amen. Let's wait till the candle. It came upon the midnight clear. Fourth was only.
you astound us with your miracles. We rejoice that you sent your son Jesus to bring life and salvation. We are grateful for your great wisdom and love in your actions toward mankind. Help us to be more like Mary, believing your word and trusting in the fulfillment of your promises. We dedicate our tithes and offerings for the mission of this church so that more people will find hope in waiting for Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
are setting up. I uh, just wanted to make a couple of announcements and uh, go from there. Um, I am still looking for two readers for our readers theater skit for next Sunday. So if anyone out there would like to be one of the readers, reader one, reader two, I have your scripts here, very short, big print, in case you have a problem seeing. <laughs> it won't take that long. So if someone out there you would like to be part of our little skit for next Sunday, uh, please feel free to see me before we leave. And if not, I guess we'll have to take a trip with the two from the other uh, spot. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> also, um, while they're setting up, just wanted to um, see if you all received these or not. John, have these uh, been passed out already? Okay. No, they're they're passed on the way out, maybe? In the, the mail. mail. Okay. On your way out. One for family. We have some goodies for you. Uh, at least the first 50. <laughs> one per family. Okay, one per family. How about that? So one per family. Um, these are the Light of Christmas uh, Family Guide to celebrating Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So uh, make sure that you get one of these before you go as you well. All right. The little world is slipping down here, so I have to be careful with that. All right. And of course, um, well, I do want to say thank you to the Pongalo family for um, their hard work and dedication um, to everything that they do come around here. But uh, also, uh, the Pongalos, as well as uh, Barb, uh, we were all here kind of late into the evening uh, yesterday. Uh, there was a wedding here, and uh, so some of us were here to take care of things in regards to that, uh, but especially for. Uh, Barb and Jill for um, staying out late and here at the church to make sure things are ready for today for the children. So let's just give them a round of applause. And <laughs> All right, so make it make it okay. This is it. Okay. All right. And so now we want to thank God once again for them and we present to you our uh, children's Christmas program.
fulfilled what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us.
for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd people Israel.
we give them all a big round of applause? In your bulletin is a insert called the Sacrament of Waking. So if you will take that out. As I stand before you briefly, this is a pastoral reflection. <laughs> Not a sermon, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> And that's a picture of a uh, tree with the snow on it. <clears throat> this sacrament of waiting is actually part two of something that we started for those of you who were here last month uh, when we did an exercise called Leaf It on the Altar, yeah. where we had our wonderful leaves that I so graciously cut out by hand, all of them by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and all these leaves, you were able to put down some things that you wanted to leave it on the altar, leave it on the altar, leave, leave, get it? Okay. You want to convince me more and more not to quit my day job. <laughs> I can't stand the comedy, it's not one of them. <laughs> but anyway, this is part two. And so basically, the, the image that we had at that time was image of a tree um, where the leaves had fallen off, okay, and so it was the, the bare, bare tree. All right, this is part two of it, and so as I read this reading to you, I want you to think about the barren tree with all the leaves that have fallen off, and then now continuing in the season of waiting, which Advent is waiting for the birth of Christ. It's also a season of waiting um, sometimes in our lives for those things that we are waiting for God to do or to bless us with or to help us through. So if you can visualize the start of this barren tree to this tree here that's snow covered, okay, and usually when well, there's snow covered like that, they're really beautiful. And then of course, even more with that, there's the anticipation of uh, spring coming when that tree will once again bear new leaves. And so basically that's just some visual image for those of you who, who live in that world, because some of us learn by touching, some of us learn by you know listening, some of us learn uh, by visualization. And so we just wanted to leave this brief message with you as I read it, and those are some of the images I want you to keep in mind. Sacrament of waiting, and this is by Macmillan Whitaker, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Anyway, it says, the sunrise and sunset watched with tenderness. And once again, we're visualizing this barren tree, okay? Clothing her with silhouettes that kept her hope alive. And of course, we're moving towards this tree now with the snow covered on it. 
They helped her understand that her vulnerability, her dependence and need, her emptiness, her readiness to receive were giving her a new kind of beauty. So the barren tree has now gone to this beautiful tree that is now snow covered. Every morning and every evening they stood in silence and celebrated together the sacrament of waiting. So basically these trees are now waiting, okay, and this is what we call sacrament. And a sacrament is what something that Jesus has told us to do. So once again, this is for those of you who are visualized learners and who like the world pictures. This is not just for the trees, the trees that are bare or the trees that are snow covered that are anticipating the new life in the spring, but this is also for us. So whatever you're going through, whatever barrenness you may be going through, whatever things that you have written down on those leaves that you be left on the altar, this is once again still a period of waiting. But here's what our, our Lord tells us when you are in your season of waiting for whatever it is that you're waiting for to God to handle in your life. And it says, and Jesus said, now, if that is how God cares for the wild flowers in the field, which are here today and gone tomorrow, will God uh, not all more care for you? So basically, just like he cares for the trees and the leaves and the snow covered and, and all that goes along with that and brings them into their new life in the spring, that anticip anticipation of waiting, it's the same thing you'll do in our lives, spiritually as well as physically. And we are but to trust him just like the trees trust God as well for the newness that's coming. So, as you leave today, you are invited to take a snowflake. So I left some in the back. Uh, ushers, you have my snowflakes? Okay. So ushers will be prepared to pass out a snowflake to you, okay? And on it, it also says once again, Jesus said, now if that is how God cares for the wild flowers in the field, which are here today and gone tomorrow, will God not all the more care for you? Once again, if God cares for the trees that are sometimes barren, yet reflect beauty in their coveredness with snow, and their even more beautiful life in the spring, and God cares for them, how much more does he care for you? And so that's the message for us today. So it says, as you leave today, you are invited to take a snowflake, <clears throat> place it somewhere to remind you that you are in a season of waiting, preparing for the advent of God's love and light into the world at Christmas. When the holidays threaten to overwhelm, may your snowflake remind you of the perfection of the moment. Because contrary to maybe some popular belief, the holidays, Christmas time, New Year's are not wonderful for everyone because of what they've gone through this past year, because of, it reminds them of something that really makes them sad, absence and loss and grief. But let this be a reminder to those of you who may be feeling that way, that when the holidays threaten overwhelm you, we hope this reminds you of the perfection of the moment. The snowflakes are unique and so are you. And each snowflake, snowflake lasts for a brief time and then makes way for the next beautiful moment that is yet to come. So just as the snow is coming, hopefully, eventually, maybe next year or so, and maybe not so much, and as we do buys the trees, remember even in that, newness is coming. The next beautiful moment will be spring. Will God will once again bless them to love and pray that God will do the same for you. Remember, no matter what you're going through, God cares for you, and the next beautiful moment is yet to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope that was clear. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing us to gather this day and to remind us that in this season of waiting, not only for the birth of our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we take time to celebrate but also for the, the sacredness and the, the sacrament of waiting in our own lives as we wait for whatever it is, the next best job, or the, 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 the child to be born, or, or the wedding, or uh, graduation, or uh, the good news from the doctor, <coughs> and, and all these things that we're waiting for, we just turn
turn them over into your hands because we know that you care for us. And with that, we're going to wait for the next beautiful moment that you have for us. And so now, if there's anyone here in the sound of my voice that's you've seen our Christmas story, I've seen our Christmas story from our children, and even heard our orders to our pastoral reflection today, know that Jesus is the one you need in your life. And this will be a great time to get him into your heart if you don't have him in your heart. And you can do that by saying this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you can say it to yourself, something like this. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. <clears throat> I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again and that you're coming back again. So now I confess that I've given you my life. Take my life, oh Lord. Leave my life. And when you take me to heaven when it comes time for me to die. For I surely will die one day and or be caught up in the rapture. For I ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 And of course, if you said that prayer, the angels of heaven are rejoicing and we rejoice with you. Look at our bulletin for lots of Christian discipleship information, as well as call the office if you're interested in membership. Amen. We're going to move right along to our time of our pastoral prayer. This is an opportunity for uh, us to be on one accord and bring our collective prayers to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so there were a few prayer cards that were turned in. And this one isn't marked, but I will just mention this situation of someone recovering from a, a kidney transplant for public worship. Um, pray for, thank you, pray for Sarah Cancer Sally. Cassie Niece. I think that's what it says. This one's with a prayer group. This is also with a prayer group. This one's with a prayer group. And for public worship, um, Marie is going to see her daughters. Yay. And she has a daughter who will be 18 on Tuesday. Amen. All right, I think that's all, if I read this correctly. Okay. So with that, we will begin our time of prayer. We will come in with silent prayer to give you an opportunity to bring your personal joys and concerns to the Lord, and then we will conclude together um, with the Lord's prayer. So with that, let us pray. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we come before you on this wonderful Sunday before Christmas. Time has really moved swiftly here, oh God. Some of us are what we call ready and some of us are, are not. But whatever we are, oh God, we have come this morning to lift up your holy name and to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, we will also want to come and ask you for forgiveness for all of our sins, all of our shortcomings. These are things that you require for us to do on a daily basis. And so we don't want to let this day go by without also asking you to forgive us for all of our sins, those things that we may have said, thought, or done that were displeasing in your sight. And then, Lord, of course, we come with joy in our, our hearts um, for family gatherings that have already taken place, the parties that we've all gone to or some have gone to, and, of course, the family gatherings that some of us are going to experience as, as the week and a couple of the weeks draw near. And so we thank you for that, oh God. And do pray, Lord God, of course, for those who are lonely, who don't look at the holidays and it's this great time. I can't wait till January the 2nd when everything is pretty much over. So we pray for them that you give them the peace they need to make it through, oh God, for whatever situation that they may be waiting for or for whatever situation they just need to get through in terms of grief, loss, or sadness, oh God, and finances as well. We want to just thank you, oh God, and lift up uh, all of our concerns. And of course, thank you so much for the wonderful children's program and those who work with the children. And thank you for the parents and the guardians and everyone who brought the children out to partake in our service today. 
So God of star and night, you delighted to place a star in our darkened skies, and you found ways to invite us to celebrate your son's birth. We rejoice that as you cradle him in the simplicity of a manger, you cradle us in our ordinary moments. You hold us in our weakness. You carry us in your heart. You lift us up in our hurt and shame. We give you thanks. God of power and light, lead us into a new year filled with surprises and wonder. Let the bells of freedom ring in all lands for all oppressed by lack of food or work, for all imprisoned for their release, and for all scarred by wars and rumors of war. God of truth and light, let the winds of renewal touch our hearts. Stir us to tell others about the love of God and to listen to the whispers and nudges of your spirit. As we close out our time of prayer, we want to remember all of our military, firefighters, police officers, and citizens of God, and that you would keep us all safe from her harm or danger. And then, Lord, we want to thank you for growth and pray for more spiritually, numerically, and financially. And of course, to continue sending us children and others and adults and parents of God to carry out your mission and your vision for such a time as this. We ask all these things, we thank you, oh God, for all these things, and once again, we declare and decree them done according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And then, oh God, you've given us this wonderful prayer to pray, as in our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread.